Okay, good afternoon. Um, my name is Hirotaka Suzuki from SD Tech. Uh, yeah, you know, like he said, I'll try my best to save you guys from the la after lunch coma. Um, so today I'm going to talk about the HMI for automobile. Um, I'm going to cover about the, uh, the development workflow and some tools to enable that workflow. So uh, uh, before getting started, um, let me do some quick survey. How many of you guys are designer in this room? Oh, just a few. So uh, can I assume that everyone else are engineers? OK. So um, I'm a, actually, I'm a UI UX designer with a background of software engineering. And I'm the CEO of SD Tech. And uh, as, at SD Tech, uh, we do design and engineering. So uh, at SD Tech, um, we create HMI for automobile. Um, but when we say HMI, it's not only about the uh, visual graphics, but also, you know, we cover many other things. If you get in a, one of a recent car, you know, you may find, you know, many devices in a vehicle. Uh, for instance, there are a bunch of displays here, 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 and there, everywhere. Well, you know, lately you may find some displays even in the mirrors. And also we have, you know, a bunch of speakers so that you can do some kind of 3D audio stuff as well. And also, you know, lighting is everywhere, of course. And we also have some haptic devices and vibration devices and so on and so on. And of course, we have some sensors to monitor drivers and passengers. So when it comes to HMI, you know, you can utilize all of these devices to create a better HMI. Or in other words, you got to orchestrate everything to create a better HMI. <clears throat> so uh, HMI, you know, of course, it stands for human machine interface. But it's, you know, these days it's getting more like you know, human machine interaction instead of, you know, just interface, it's interaction. And even further, it's like human machine communication. So when you create um, HMI, uh, it means that you got to create a communication uh, between vehicles and drivers. And that's, you know, one of the, the most crucial element in a vehicle, especially in the, the current, you know, autonomous driving era. So I want to show you something. Did anyone in this room have seen this video before? No? Okay, so give it a try. So this is a lady sitting in the driver's seat, not driving, but just sitting. It's Tesla model, uh, I think it's model S, and the vehicle is driving on its own. Yeah. Oh, there's cars coming! Oh, oh, there's cars! Build this! Put me back for me to control it! Oh dear Jesus! I could never! Ah! Ah! Oh, where's it going? God damn, Bill! Oh my God! Oh, this is so scary! My, oh Jesus! This is my first day out. But still, out the vehicle is driving on its own. Oh come on, very safe. Oh my God, Bill! I I couldn't do it. Oh! Oh, is the car coming? Just! Oh my God! You're going to hit us! Oh! I, it's Okay, hit the brakes, hit the brakes. Oh, right. Now you're driving. So um, maybe this is a little bit exaggerated, but this is what happens, you know, when a vehicle doesn't have any proper HMI. So, it, you know, it's very important for us as a designer or as an engineer to provide a proper HMI um, to, you know, drivers. <clears throat> You know, if only we can provide a proper HMI, meaning that we can design and implement a proper communication between a vehicle and a, you know, lady there. Maybe, you know, she has not been that terrified like you've seen in this video. So HMI is very, you know, important. And it's HMI's responsibility for us to let her sit back and relax. Then the question is, how can we create good HMI for automobile? So it's very, you know, kind of tough question. Um, honestly, 
I don't know the answer. But one thing for sure is that you never know if the HMI you've just created is a good one or not until you try it with a real device in a real environment. So you got to try it in a real environment, meaning that you got to try it in a real vehicle or something similar. You cannot you know, check if this HMI is okay or not just in the display. No, it doesn't work that way. So it's always important for us to you know, build and try and iterate that cycle as many times as possible. So uh, this is a typical workflow um, to create HMI. We have many people. Uh, we have UI UX designers, in other words, architects. And also we have visual designers. And of course, engineers. So UI UX designer, you know, they're going to um, design the ground concept or you know, the basic design of HMI. Um, sometimes we call it wireframe. And then they will give that data to visual designers. And visual designers you know, create something, um, some fancy stuff. And then they will give that data to engineers where engineers will implement and integrate. And finally, we get the application running in the real device. So this is you know, very typical, isn't it? But it's very hard for us as a designer um, to try our design in a real device because we got to wait until engineers to, you know, um, to finish their job. I mean, even if we get, I mean, get our design done, it's not possible for us to run that design in a real device. You got to ask engineers to do the implementation and we just wait for them to finish their work done. And sometimes, or I should say, it always take long time for us as a designer to wait for them to finish their work. Sometimes it's like months and months and months. In worst case, it's going to be like six months for us to you know, wait for them to get ready. And even worse, even, you know, okay, let's say we get the application running in the real device. And then finally, we can try it and we can check it. Sometimes it's too late. We don't have much time left for us to modify it, even if we find any problems in the design at that moment, because it's very end of the project. So, you know, we just go like, okay, maybe next time. That will happen every time. And the other problem is about the communication, communication between designers and engineers. So, um, um, designer, uh, UI UX designers or graphics designers. We always use Adobe tools, mostly, in most cases. Like Photoshop, Illustrator, Animate, or After Effects to create some design. But that's something engineers don't use, right? So somehow, we gotta translate our output to something we can share with engineers. What is it? It's spreadsheet, of course. You know, everyone loves spreadsheet. So what we need to do is, first we're gonna you know, do our job utilizing Adobe Toolchain, like Photoshop and Illustrator. Okay, the designs are there, it's ready. But then we gotta start creating spreadsheet. We're gonna split every you know, element and pick up everything out of the, you know, the design data and rebuild everything in the spreadsheet. And then we're going to give it to engineers so that they can understand what we are trying to do. But in reality, no one loves spreadsheet. It's just a, you know, just a hustle. So we have tools for engineers like Qt Creator, of course, that makes engineers' life easier a lot. I believe so. But still, we as designers, we need to tackle spreadsheet and then give the spreadsheet to engineers so that they can understand what we'd like to do. Now we have Qt Designer. This is kind of tool which is supposed to make our life easier. Yes, maybe you know, there's a solution, 
So now we don't need to use Lights per sheet anymore. We can share everything we need to share by utilizing Qt Designer and Qt Creator. Yeah, sounds like a solution, but is it? I mean, if you take a deep look into the, the designer's face, I mean, what we as designers are really doing with Qt Designer or any other tools is something like this. Anyway, we're going to use Adobe tools, Photoshop, Illustrator, and stuff like that. We do everything in that tools. And then what we do next is to export the data and rebuild everything in Qt Designer or any other tools. And then we can share the design uh, with engineers. So it looks like exactly the same as what we do with Spreadsheet. We're going to use the, the Adobe tools and then, you know, rebuild everything in other tools, and then we're going to share with the engineers. So what we as designers and as engineers, what we want is a way to somehow communicate more directly um, between these two people, between engineers and designers, not via any other tools, some direct way. That's something we need. <clears throat> and actually, that's what you can get with Trito linkage and the power of QML. So uh, Trito linkage is a tool set, is a set of plugins, plugins for Adobe tools, plugins for Illustrator, Photoshop, Animate, and After Effects, with which designers can export QML data with Trito linkage. And besides, Trito linkage also provides some kind of code generation tool, which, um, you know, if you put your uh, QML file into that code generator, what you will get is a Qt project with source code. So with try to linkage, designers, um, you as a designer can, you know, focus on Adobe tools like what you've been doing for a long, long time, and then simply click some button and you get QML. And put that QML into the linkage tool, and then you'll get Qt project with source code. So you just need to give that project file to engineers and they will do the rest. And when I say, QML and Qt project source code. It's not only about the layout information or it's not only about, you know, icon or button or stuff like that. It also includes some event handling or, you know, screen transition and stuff like that. All of those interaction things are there in the QML and automatically generated Qt project. That's something you can get with uh, try to linkage and the QML. So it's like, I would say the Qt project and QML file is like the, the center, central repository of the whole project, where designers and engineers will work together simultaneously on the single you know, QML and Qt project file. So we don't need to wait. I mean, we as designers don't need to wait for engineers to do their job. We just focus on our job, which is to design and, you know, build some things. And at the same time, engineers will work on the coding side, right? And everything will be automatically merged by the try to linkage uh, server, um, you know, into this single QML and Qt project file. So you don't need you know, you don't need to wait for engineers to finish their job. Um, you can update, modify, uh, or even add some new features or delete some features from the design, and the engineers can do whatever they need to do. So that's the, the you know, thing you can get with try to linkage and QML. And uh, I believe this is, you know, only this way we can create better HMI. 
Because this way, we as designers, as soon as we get our design done, we can immediately try our design run in a real device in a real environment. So that we can you know, see if that HMI is good or bad. And if we find it bad, maybe we can modify it. That's something we can do by ourselves, I mean, on our own, without engineers. Sometimes we need to ask for engineers to do something, but not that much. So uh, let me show you some other uh, video. Oh, there's my cursor. Okay. Right. So what I'm going to show you here is the real running demonstration of try to linkage. Um, yeah, it would be great if you can, you know, try it uh, the live demo, but um, unfortunately, the, the current version of track linkage only support Windows, where I've never used it. I mean, designers always use Mac, but anyway. So I just choose some video here. Um, we always start with Illustrator, where we create wireframes. This is kind of the rough sketch of the HMI. And then what we need to do was to create spreadsheet to describe this wireframe. But that's something we don't need to do anymore with Stripe Linkage and QML. Instead, what you need to do is just simply export this design data as a QML file utilizing Try to Linkage. Um, here, you're, you know, setting some output folders and something, stuff like that. And then export finished. And now you get the QML file. This is something uh, automatically generated um, with Try to Linkage. And then there are two things you can do after you know, exporting QML file. One is to automatically, I mean, put this QML file into the code generator so, so that you can get Qt project with source code. Or you can check this QML file with Try to Linkage Viewer application, where you can you know, check how it looks in the real application. So in this case, um, in this video, uh, I'm going to try load this QML file in the, the Linkage Viewer application. So you simply drag and drop the QML file, and you'll see what it looks like. And the point is, here you can see, you know, if you click some buttons here, you know, the, the colors are changing. That means it already, already has some interaction implemented in that QML data. And actually, that kind of event handling was actually defined when I draw the original Illustrator there. So kind of you can embed those kind of interaction, uh, interaction uh, information in the Illustrator there. So uh, that kind of thing uh, doesn't require any engineering resources. Whoops. OK. Oops. And let me try again. Okay. Yeah, this kind of event handling is already integrated in the QML data. And that's something you can define with Illustrator. And then uh, next, uh, you're going to give that QML data to visual designer, where designer, visual designers will load that QML data into the Photoshop. And then they're going to do some paintings to make it look fancier, right? 
So this is the original wireframe. The application is Photoshop. And then the graphics designers, visual designers, did something like this. And then again, um, he's going to export this Photoshop data um, as a modified QML data. And then you get the updated QML file. So QML data is kind of the central repository, like I said. You just give this QML data to you know everyone else. And here you can see the animate, uh, where you can define animation. You can add whatever animation you want. Load that QML data, and then add some anim animation like this. Okay. So again, we're going to export this animation data as a QML data. And now you are ready to give this animation data uh, to the code generator. So now what you you see here is the code generator, where you're gonna you know load the QML data and get the Qt project file with source code. Hundred percent done. Now it's ready for you guys, as engineers to do some coding. So this is the Qt creator, and I just opened that um, automatically generated data. And what you see here is that running the, I mean, build, compile, and building the application as it is. I mean, engineers uh, didn't do anything. Um, whoops. Okay, here, this is the, the code um, which was automatically generated um, by linkage code generator. So what will happen if we just compile it and build it? Build it. So now it's a cute application, of course, and the event handling of course, you know, it is already integrated. So this is what you can get uh, after the automatic um, code generation. You can see the event is firing. And then, so this is the, the, the code which um, tool, you know, generated, but you can, Add your code, of course, and that's something you need to do. Um, what you see here is, you know, he's trying to um, launch the animation. When you hit this button, uh, you want to play this. That's something engineers need to integrate into that source code. Whoops. Okay, so this is what you can get with try to linkage and QML. Um, it's kind of uh, plugins and code generator. So designers don't need to, you know, uh, tackle spreadsheet anymore. Designers can directly export QML data directly from Adobe tools. And then once you get QML data, you just need to give that to the engineers so that they can do the rest of the work, like you see in that video. But the key point is that, like I said before, um, the only way to check if that HMI you've just created is good or not, uh, the only way to check is to try it in a real device, in a real environment. But when it comes to the automotive, uh, I mean automobile, it takes long, long time and it's, it costs a lot to prepare the real environment, which means real vehicle. So usually, in the development phase, we don't have any real vehicle. So what can you do? Um, sometimes we utilize, whoops, VL to 
try that HMI. So what you see here is a, a Unity application integrated with Qt. So the, the screen here, the touch panel, was created with Qt, and the overall vehicle, that's Unity. So this way, you know, you can somehow um, simulate the real environment, and you can see if, you know, the distance is right or not, or, you know, how easy to um, monitor, I mean, see the monitor or not, and stuff like that. So actually, that's not part of try to linkage, but, some, but that's something we are working on. Uh, with try to linkage, um, you can you know, create a more efficient workflow, and with this VL solution, um, you can check um, your HMI very, you know, in a very early stage, even before the VCO is ready. <clears throat> So uh, HMI is one of the most crucial elements of automobile, like I said. But again, the only way to evaluate the usability of that HMI is to try in a real device, in real environment. So it's very important for us to make that kind of workflow possible. Try as much as possible in a real device. And what you see here today was QML and try to linkage is one of the solutions. And with that, um, I'm going to conclude my uh, session and uh, I'm going to take some questions. Thanks. Yep. Anybody have any plans to support Excuse me? Any plans to support Uh Not yet. But uh, yeah, if, you know, many people use this sketch, then, yeah, of course we do. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah.